Okay, welcome to Micro Lecture 12.2. I titled this, uh, Are We Not Men? Uh, that's a reference uh, to an old movie and to a, um, an old story, The Island of Dr. Moreau, if you've ever uh, seen it. So we'll just leave it at that. Let's talk about um, education inside prisons, what we do for prisoners. So different countries have different standards for education inside prison. Uh, part of the issue here is that um, each state in the United States has a different system, and of course you got the federal system. So there's 51 different systems. Now, um, about 66, about two thirds of American prisoners have some degree of high school diploma, um, which is lower than the general population. Now there is no constitutional right to an education inside prison. Um, and in fact, what we've seen since the 1990s is a dramatic cut in the number of programs available to people to get certificates or vocational education or anything inside prison. The North Carolina system uses its community college to offer primarily vocational degrees, but some certifications inside our prisons. Um, what about contacts with people on the outside? These are phone calls. Again, there is no constitutional right for inmates to make phone calls or to receive or to write letters. And some states use this as a mechanism to control prisoners. So in Texas, if you do not agree to work inside the prison, um, you will not be allowed to make phone calls. And all phone calls are limited to more, no more than five minutes. Now some states are a little bit more generous. Typically 15 is about the top. Um, North Carolina does allow outgoing collect calls. One of the things that's been going on is privatization of the prison system of calling. Um, so lately prisons have been raising money by charging inmates uh, somewhere between three and twelve dollars for a call. North Carolina is um, twelve dollars for a 15 minute call. And how this works usually is that private companies are given monopolies for these phone calls and then they pay back the, the systems. Okay, so here's a, a graph, a, broke a breakdown of what is charged. You notice the states in red charge about $3 for a 15-minute call. Um, some of the jails, and you see North Carolina there, is uh, up to $12. The average rate is 16 for in-state calls in the kind of purplish states or the yellowish states. So you can see that breakdown. I'll let you look at that. Um, what about outside visitation? Again, there's no constitutional right to this. Visitation can be denied at any time. Now, North Carolina, um, I'm not going to go too far into the weeds for this, but basically what you do as an inmate in North Carolina is you have to create a list, and there are 18 people, I believe, on that list. There's all sorts of special rules about it, too, how you can delete people, but you can't add people except during certain times. So increasingly, again, there's a, a way to make money off of prisoners going on here. Um, a lot of prisons are shifting to video call only. You're not allowed to physically visit the inmates. You have to do a video call. And again, there's a charge for this, about $13 for a 20-minute session. This is used, again, private corporations are given the contract. Uh, they pay the state, uh, and prisoners have to pay, or their families, $13 for a 20-minute session. One of the questions I get frequently is, well, what about conjugal visits? These are the ability to um, have relations, uh, would be an old term for it, or sex, if you want a more accurate term for it, uh, with prisons. Only four prisons systems allow this, Connecticut, New York, Washington State, and California. This was higher back in the 1990s, but has been cut back dramatically. Uh, what about access to books and electronics? So again, there's no constitutional right to books or electronics, and there's 51 different systems. So uh, most allow access to only certain books that have to be physically present in the prison libraries or sent in and not seized um, from the outside by the prisoner's family. You, there's a little bit of a greater access right to law books if you're filing an appeal. Now some states have very extensive lists of banned books. 
Uh, Florida has 20,000 titles that are banned that can't be in their prison system. Texas has 10,000, including some of Shakespeare's sonnets, believe it or not, and one that cracked me up when I found it, uh, Where is Waldo is banned in Texas. North Carolina only has about 500 titles that are banned. Um, access to money and goods. So typically inmates can't have money in prison, but what they get is they get a credit, usually at a commissary or a shop that sells uh, goods in prison. And the most popular thing that is sold is ready food, um, snack foods, beverages. Personal hygiene items are, are very much in demand. These can be things like toilet paper because it's limited, uh, shower sandals, underwear, because again, those are limited. You have to buy additional pairs if you want them. Um, so I included a breakdown of a typical um, way prisoners spend money. You'll notice that they spend it on this kind of ready food. This is a yearly budget. Um, they spend about $270 on ready food, about 200 on snack food, beverages, ingredients that you might get, condiments, including purchasing ketchup and things like that. Uh, 89 on hygiene items, and then electronics are primarily radios. Uh, they can have radios with restrictions on them. Some clothing, and then there's mail, stationary, household goods, and then unclassified. Uh, what about a job in prison? Well, typically inmates are expected to work. If they refuse, um, they will lose privileges like outside communication. Uh, payment is very limited. Now, North Carolina, um, if you are um, working inside the prison, you're going to get between 40 and 70 cents to up to a dollar a day for your job. If you work in what's called a correctional enterprise prison, you can get up to three dollars a day. And then there are special prison industry enhancement programs that you can earn up to a dollar seventy four per hour after deductions because there are deductions for what you can imagine inside prisons. Uh, again, they don't get access to a lot of that money. Only some of it will go to credits in the commissary. All right, and on that note, we've uh, done about seven minutes and we'll pick up with the next lecture uh, whenever you feel like it.